Is this helping? No. <laughs> For a second, I was like, thank you. But then I was like, wait, I can't see. Every chef knows there are unbreakable rules in the kitchen, but what happens when you actually break those rules? Does Uncle Roger rain fiery vengeance upon you and your family, or are they just arbitrary myths peddled from chef to chef just waiting to be busted? That's why we've assembled this highly trained team of serious culinary professionals to put them to the test. Because this is Myth munchers! Yeah. yeah! You ready to take on our biggest myth munching challenge ever? You say yeah. that yeah. every episode! Yeah, but this time it's for real because we're taking on the fried rice impresario, Uncle Roger himself. No. But first, but first, we gotta get into my official pyramid of eating utensils. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so first up at the bottom of the pyramid, this is what you gotta use the most often. Hands are the original utensil. They are God's utensil. You are meant to eat everything with your hands. If you've never eaten a bowl of soup with your hands, you just scoop the clam chowder and go So that's what your first line of attack is. Second, Chinese soup spoon. It's the greatest spoon ever invented. Why? It almost becomes a mini bowl into itself. You can fill it with so much soup. Korean soup spoons, God bless you, you try. You're just not up there with Chinese soup spoons. Next, chopsticks. Anything you can use a fork for, chopsticks do better. You don't need forks. Then we go to the spork. It's just fun. It's fun. Got a tattoo of a spork. It's funny. Taco Bell has sporks. It's funny. Then at the top, you should almost never use it. This is the fats and oils and all that they told us in the food pyramid, which has been absolutely debunked since we were kids. But fork. What, what's it for? Absolutely nothing. What? One Caesar salad to eat every six weeks? That's what we got. But mostly, look at hands and look at all the beautiful pictures of these hands. This is kind of creepy. I want to put this up in my room. Now. So Whoa. sorry, I guess. Whoa. Sorry. Tiger Whoa. got out of the cage. Fried rice mitts. So we are taking these all directly from Uncle Roger. Two second into Weijo, and I already see saucepan haiya. Where your walk, Jamie? Where, Where your walk? walk? He has come out and he has criticized several people for their fried rice making abilities. Jamie Oliver has been a target. Tried to come after Gordon Ramsay, but man, Gordon Ramsay can really make the hell out of some fried rice. So we are taking his official egg fried rice method. He is from Malaysia. I stand by the fact that Malaysia has one of the best fried rice techniques out there, I'm just True. saying. So we're taking his exact recipe that he diagrammed out in the video, and we're gonna put all the pieces of that to the test. First up, wok versus saute pan. Listen, 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 hear me out. Most people making fried rice at home, especially in America, they may not have a wok. True. I have made fried rice in a saute pan. Do I think it's going to be better than a wok? Not necessarily, but this is the one thing that he really goes after people for not having a wok. We're gonna see just how much better a wok is versus a saute pan, or maybe, maybe there's a dark horse. Maybe the saute pan can actually work. I'm not hopeful, but we gotta test it out. Day old rice versus fresh rice. It says that you gotta use day old rice because it's a little bit dehydrated. It soaks up with the oil more. It doesn't create steam in the pan. You actually get some of that crispiness on it. Then we're going with the fat. Peanut oil, Uncle Roger has a lot of things against people with peanut allergies. I have said the same thing in the privacy of my own home. I've never said it out loud because it's disrespectful people with peanut allergies, but I wanna eat them on airplanes again. We're trying peanut oil versus pork fat, which uh, he actually goes to a restaurant and demos the fried rice and they use pork fat versus olive oil, which Jamie Oliver did use. And I hate when people use olive oil in any sort of East Asian dish, it's absolutely insane to me. And then finally, this is a very specific cooking technique thing. Do you dump the cooking fat to create what is called wok hay, which is that like indelible wok charred flavor that fried rice is signature for, or do you not dump the oil? So like, can you just heat the oil directly, chuck it in, and will it create the same effect? We're about to find out, and we're about to eat a hell of a lot of really delicious fried rice. Woo! Yes! Yeah, are you excited? I'm so yes! excited! Yes! I can't hear you! I am excited! I'm being loud, I feel like you can hear me. All right, cool, so we're gonna write down our official guesses. Here, everybody take a card. And then whoever loses has to DM, uh, Nigel Ong is the actual comedian's name who plays Uncle Roger. He's fantastic, even outside of character. We have to DM him that he has to wear a different color shirt and that we don't like fried rice. Uh, Whoa! It's gonna be uncomfortable. The stakes are high. Stimulating meaningful conversations. That, that's what Mythical Kitchen does. <laughs> Uh, 
Lily, dude, Uncle Roger's gonna tear us apart yeah. for this. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're, we're cooking in a saute pan right here. Um, this is in the Jamie Oliver video. Uh, he said that wok hay is essential to fried rice. It literally translates to breath of the wok and there's no such thing as saucepan hay. Egg fried rice need to use wok because you need the wok hay. Many people asking Uncle Roger, what is wok hay? It is the breath of wok. When you cook with wok, the wok give the food flavor. Get the wok hay. No such thing as saucepan hay. We're putting that to the test right now. I mean, this wok is breathing. That wok is literally breathing. There's no life coming from the saucepan right here. No, that right one here. looks a little dead. We're heating the oil right now to dump it out. Uncle Roger says that that is key, so you can get the pan super hot and all lubed up and seasoned, and then you add in fresh oil. Do you think we're ready to go? We're waiting for these to get up to what, 600 degrees? Yeah, so this one is actually surpassing 600 a little bit. Nice. So. Hey, I'm at 572. Okay. Okay, and this is a super high heat anodized nonstick, get up to 1500 degrees, so we're not gonna get cancer from that. We're gonna get cancer from all the other things that we do in life. Yes, that's All the true. lead paint that I drink. <laughs> pan smoking hot. Oil. Oil. Garlic and shallot. Garlic and shallot. Go, go, go. Go, go, it's gotta go quick. That's yep. the point of wok cookery, you gotta okay, go quick. You gotta, you gotta just do a little toss. Oh God, I have to go lefty? Oh, this sucks. Uh, okay, you're, you're going to toss. Okay. We're gonna add in the egg. Can you smell the aromatics? He said when you smell uh, it. Yep, okay, we're oh, adding the egg. Hard. I'm smelling hard, I'm smelling hard. We're adding hard. the egg. And the egg you're breaking up with the spatch, right? Yep. All right, so we're using- stirring. Yeah. I'm turning this up. Yeah, we're cranking. We're cranking all the way to high heat. We're cranking, Lily. We gotta go, we gotta go. I'm getting a little bit of browning on the garlic. That is literally why the saucepan doesn't work. Yep. It's because you don't get constant movement like that. Okay, okay, egg's almost cooked. Also, it's very hard on a camp stove. So. Yeah, 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 the camp stove sucks. Yes. Normally you use what's called like a turbo burner for a wok. Yeah, this is not that. This is not a turbo burner, but okay. we're trying our best, Uncle Roger. I'm so sorry, please don't come for us. Rice, and they're breaking up, and you want to pat the rice down, right? Yeah, pat, he flattens the rice with his spoon, so there's no clumps. Okay. We gotta do some flips. Flipping so much better in a wok than a saute pan, okay. Okay. I'm getting flippage. I'm seeing pretty equivalent flippage right here, Lily. Okay, I'm not strong. Soy sauce? Soy sauce. We're going soy sauce. Is this a dark soy, regular soy? Regular soy. He uses regular. like regular, what's the blue bottle brand? The Kiko. Uh, bl uh, Blue Moon, the beer. No, 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 not Abs that one. Blue Ribbon. You know what's happening? I'm getting stickage on the bottom here, and I yep. think it's because I can't get that constant motion. Yeah, this is a uh, pretty non-stick. Yeah, but it's not a non-stick nice. wok. Like this is an like what is it, what do they call it? Carbon. Uh, blue carbon steel. Blue. This wait. is a blue carbon steel. Wok. No, this is blue carbon steel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you do it. You do it, Lily. You do it. This is blue carbon steel. <laughs> do you feel the energy? We're dumping the scallion chili. This is, you just want to get like a little bit of heat and warmth on it, right? Like you don't actually want to cook it because that's the freshness. The aromatic. And your fried rice. Jeez, and rice looks so good. How much fried rice are you losing? I'm losing a fair amount. Uh, yeah, I think I got a lot on the floor, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got some fried rice in the vans. Oh, oh, nice snack for later. Shoot, I'm almost seeing a little bit more browning on mine, but I don't yeah, know if that's a good is. thing. Right, and that could just be a heat differential. Like that could be the fact that we're using crappy camp stoves. Yes. Because Burbank Fire Marshal, until Taylor gets anointed as Burbank Fire Marshal, the coronation ceremony is gonna be absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this looks very, I'm It looks saying. good, both of them look good. I'm saying, this looks good. Yeah. All right, plate up? Yeah. Let's do it. Which, which one do you think looks better? Like, which one did you go for? Actually, initially, like, this looks better to me. Yeah. But I think it's just, I like those little charred bits. Like, mm -hmm. So, but we'll oh, see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, the spoon just feels good sinking in there. This is this such a good fried rice recipe? Mm -hmm. Uncle Roger, dude, like, you know what's up. Not that we had any doubts, but the recipe is great. It tastes very good. You taste some wake? I do get a smoky flavor from it. Same, same, same. Mm -hmm. And that's probably from, especially you're not using a nonstick wok, you're using like the carbon steel. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get a lot of like actual heat and flavor in there. You're not just gonna get like the, you know, Teflon ass flavor. <laughs> Let's try this. There's something that I'm seeing here, like you can literally see the unevenness in the browning. Like you're getting crispy bits right here. Yeah, you're right. But there's still like some white pieces too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The texture is very different. The texture is so different. It's, it's not, not bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know what this tastes like? <laughs> the, the BS fried rice that I make at home. Mmm. It's like I almost haven't... chewy, like a, not in a good way. No, it's too chewy. Yeah. It's too chewy, and that's because, well, the wok, literally the concave like shape of it, yep. you're getting constant movement and yep. constant even cooking on it, whereas this, paella, is something where you're supposed to let it lay flat, yep. and you're supposed to get that crust on the bottom, right? right. There's something like a tad dig. You're supposed to get that crust. Fried rice, it should be evenly browned all throughout. You simply can't get that to the same degree with a saute pan yeah. as you can the wok. 
Yeah, definitely. So ultimately, the saute pan fried rice isn't terrible, but the wok is definitely the way to go. And you know what that means, Lily? <laughs> that that mid munch us. We're trying a new thing. Please bear with us. <laughs> Nicole! Guess what? What? Fried rice! Woo! Uncle Roger! Oh my god. What a guy. I know. This is incredible. I'm really excited to learn about fried rice because I don't make a lot of fried rice. Neither do I. I also don't eat a lot of fried rice. I'm more of a noodle girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So we're testing fresh rice versus day-old rice. Uncle Roger says you gotta use day-old rice. And of course, for egg fried rice, you have to use leftover rice. Because it loses a lot of that moisture and it doesn't stick together as much and you get these little, like, it separates well. Um, which, yeah, you don't want your fried rice to be super sticky and clumped together. It should be very easy to eat. And you have fresh rice. I do um, have fresh rice. I have hella fresh rice, literally still still a little bit warm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our oil is up to temp. Let's get to tossing, shall uh, we? You dump first? Yeah. After you. Oh, goodness, that's scary. That wasn't yeah, ready it's for intense. how scary that it's is. It's intense. You gotta have good wrist strength, you know, which I don't have. <laughs> oh, God. LOL. Oh, God, okay. Okay, so let's start. We start with oil. Oil, go ahead. And ahead. then we add in our garlic and shallot. <laughs> Woo! Okay, let's add oh, our Let's get oh. to cooking. Oh yeah, let's get that let's out of there. Put her over. Yeah, let's go. All right, we're going. That's Getting this aromatizing. Yeah. And you have the Hainanese rice, right? That's right. Uncle Roger says you have to use Hainanese chicken rice, which is rice cooked with chicken stock, okay. ginger, and garlic. Eggs going in? Yeah, let's do eggs. Fantastic. Let's give it a zhuzh. Let's give it a zhuzh. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so fast. Yeah. It's so fast. Hey. This is this is gonna make me want to buy a walk. Yeah? I'm kind of down to buy this a walk. This feels like so much stress. Reminder, I have the fresh rice. You have the fresh rice. Yeah. I've got the old rice. Well, it already has, it was just one big ass lump, so let's see what happens with that. All right, all right. So no, it's breaking apart, it's breaking apart, it's just cold. Uncle Roger, I'm sorry if you're watching this <laughs> and you're looking at me and you're saying, that white boy cannot cook fried rice. <laughs> I'm really trying my darndest. <laughs> we got sesame oil and soy, plop, plop. Soy. Sesame oil. MSG? Oh my god, yeah, MSG, MSG. How could I forget? How could yeah. I forget? This is fun to me. Yeah, this is a good part. This is fun to me. When the metal isn't clanging, Trevor is happy. Do you think that, you know, do you think that there's merit to the day-old rice? Because he says that's his secret. Yeah. He's like, I mean, that's that's his number one. He's like, you gotta yeah. use day-old rice. As someone who's been watching Food Network since the womb, yeah, everyone's been saying day-old rice. They've okay. been saying it since the beginning of time, so. Yeah. So it can make sense. Okay, let's add our aromatics. I'm sorry. No, green right. and red, green and red going in. <laughs> let's add our happy colors. <laughs> Christmas. I say we plate this up and give it a little taste to taste. All right. Let's do it. Trevor, look what I can do. What? <sighs> nope. You just got, Didn't work. <laughs> you just got nose on that spoon and it's going into our rice. It doesn't matter at this point. What? Well. Uh, uh, no, please, go ahead. It, well, it's here. That's all <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> That's right. This is our fresh rice, and this is our day-old rice. They look dramatically different. Yes. Zoom in, if you will. <laughs> so you can see the rice here is like hella clumpy, really wet, and actually, I can see some of the rice granules are actually broken. Yeah. Which is not good. It also looks like because of the clumps, it like got unevenly coated. Like it's not fully coated totally. in the soy sauce and the sesame oil. It just looks like, you know, it yeah. doesn't look even. It looks clumpy. This looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. I'm really excited. Should we dig into the constant? Yeah. Let's do it. Just have a little bite. Just a, just a taste. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Roger, you know how to make a good fried rice. That's delicious. Yo, I saw Pitch Perfect last night. Yeah? Yeah, for like the eighth time. Mm hmm. Gummy. Mm hmm. It's almost like the starch sticks to the roof of your mouth. Yeah. It's not an enjoyable eating. It tastes delicious. It still yeah. has all the key notes and all the taste because they're exactly the same. But the texture yeah. and the mouthfeel and the experience yeah. just doesn't cut it. There's no like crispiness to it. No, there's there's no dimension. It's just no. mush and mush. Yeah. Well, you know, Uncle Roger, you know what you're doing. You really do. You know what you're doing. The chicken rice I love. Chicken rice is great. So, oh my God. Ready to say the thing that we this say? came out of my mouth. Putting it back in. <laughs> um, yeah, what? Okay, so, use day-old rice in your fried rice. Uncle Roger is right. And, and this myth munched us! Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble. 
So we are testing out different fats. Uncle Roger said that you should use peanut oil even though if people have peanut allergies, you're weak. you're weak. So we're gonna try that out. We're also gonna try pork fat and olive oil, which I really don't think is gonna but be good. But Jamie Oliver uses no, olive oil. With one tablespoon of olive oil. And what? One tablespoon of, of what? I don't know. Rachel Ray pill, uh, olive oil pilled everybody, I swear to God. Uh, do not use olive oil for Asian cookery. It's just simply olives didn't exist there. The cook, you know what I mean? <sighs> Okay, what, there we okay. go. Okay. Well, uh, technically the Middle East is um, like West Asia. Oh. Okay, we gotta dump out the oil, right? Yes, okay, okay. okay. let this me is bring this smoky. over. It's getting it's smoky. Just... I don't know how we're gonna do this with two people, Josh. We got. We need reinforcements. Yeah, I need help, we need, we need help. We need the freaking Navy SEAL of uh, walkers over here. Nicole, you gotta here. be like a 70 year old lady at the Westfield Mall in Sherman Oaks at 6.30 a.m. on a Sunday. You got this? I got the bones for it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, you do. One, two, go. I, do you guys, I, I, I don't know about do pork fat, Do I add fat, my man. aromatics now? Add your aromatics, oh. add your aromatics and go. Ow. Shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky. A lot of smells. I'm smelling a lot of pork fat here, Nicole. How's that olive oil doing? Is it burning? It's burning, it's burning my, it my is literally burning already burning. Okay, we're going, we're going. We gotta go eggs, we gotta go eggs, we gotta, we gotta go eggs. Gotta go eggs, 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 eggs. Aromatics are going, all right. Yep, okay. The eggs slow down the burning on the aromatics. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There it is, there it is. <laughs> Guys, we gotta start a hibachi restaurant together. God dang. I'm so concentrated right now. This uh, is fun. It's hurting my head. Everything is like burnt on my side. Yeah, your aromatics went real quick. So olive oil literally, it just, it smokes so freaking quickly. It denatures and then it's gonna make your food taste worse. How does it smell? It smells all right. It smells fine. I think yeah. it, it might taste perfectly fine, I suppose. Okay, I'm getting color. Okay. Gotta go right-handed. Uh, yeah. Wait for us. We're turning and burning. Go, Lily, two-hand it. I can't. Cool, we're flipping. I have really bad we're flipping. Red strength. Figure it out. <laughs> have you seen that walk girl that's like gone viral and she like really like puts yeah, her body dude, into she's it? Like, I mean, she's she here. She like goes like this. She's here, it's like riding a bucking bronco. Whoa. Okay, okay. That's all she wrote? Yeah, I let's guess. do it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I did that for. Uh, we got all the rices in front of us. Uh, yes. Which one are you gonna try first? Which one are you most optimistic about or pessimistic about? I feel very pessimistic about. I do too. Should we go first, or let okay. it ruin our? Day? Or should we enjoy good fried rices before we ruin? No, no, no. What? That's antithetical to the spirit of myth munchers. This one. You know. This is normal. We had this before. This they is good. They all look we very know similar. Good. I think we're just. God dang it, it's so good. Yeah. Still, it's still so good. It's good. Peanut oil is very neutral. It can carry a very high heat. I found that peanut oil and canola oil or vegetable oil, under the same heat, peanut oil actually gets hotter. Oh, I didn't know So you know put that. it in a deep fryer, yeah. We're about 10 degrees hotter, in my experience at least. We do like peanut oil for a deep fryer. Sure do. Pork fat. It is porky, which makes sense. And it's good. It's very porky and it's very good. It's really good. It is really good. Well, hold on though. There's already so much MSG in here, right? Yep. Which is good. MSG gives you that meat flavor, that umami. Yep. Which one between these two is actually better? Because to me, this is giving this a lot more meat flavor. It does, yeah. Right? But this, you get the meat flavor like coming from the MSG. I feel like the mix of like our amazing wake and mm -hmm. the pork fat, it's just this really nice smoky flavor. It adds like another dimension. Damn, that's really close for me. That's really close for me. Let's mull it over okay. while eating the olive oil. Maybe one. this is gonna win. Our minds are open. It's more neutral than I thought it was gonna be. It's it's like smells like olive oil, like right when I put it in my mouth, and it's weird. It's just kind of like not that flavorful. I don't know. I'm getting this like terrible bitterness at the end of it that comes from a burnt olive oil, right? Yeah. But like, if you're in a pinch and you like don't want to go to the store, or, okay, check this out. So if you've been drinking and you're in your home, you wanna make fried rice, it's better to use olive oil than it is to hop behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> so Lily, I think we got a clear winner here, right? Yeah. It's pork fat. fat. This I myth has that been much. That was so up. good, that felt I really natural. Up. No, I think I you did good, that up. felt natural, right? Ah, welcome back. We got a bunch of burning hot pork fat. Also, to be clear, Uncle Roger never said that he was expressly against pork fat. He said that he liked peanut oil, and then he was like, wow, I didn't know he could use pork fat. But anyway, it's pork fat one, so we got the burning pork fat in here. Lily's gonna dump out her pork fat, and I'm gonna leave my pork fat in burning. <laughs> the idea is that this is definitely gonna scorch the aromatics. Nicole, drop the aromatics. Oh, God, it's going so fast. This is gonna burn in a second, Nicole. This is how I make fried rice at home, okay? 
There you go. And get the egg ready. It's going get nice. It's going it. nice. All right, dump in the eggs. Dump in the eggs. Dump in the eggs. Going in. Going in. Dump in the eggs. They say this is also key to getting wok hay, and I see the benefit, right? When you bring the oil up to temp, you're getting a lot of heat on that wok, but you're not going to burn your oil. You get fresh oil in there. It totally works. It smells really good in here. I wish you had smell of it. <laughs> the uh, over there, yeah. and I feel like no, they're not taking this seriously. seriously. They're not seriously. taking this seriously. I feel like we're in a race. <laughs> <laughs> it's a race. <laughs> a rat race. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. It's like that's the loading good. screen stand. Yeah. Reckon you got to keep the knees. All right, dump it in. Dump in the rice. Dump in the rice. Dump in the rice. Going in. Okay. Dump in the rice. I'm losing the beat. I'm losing the beat. No, 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 no. You can't lose the beat. Wait, wait. You mean the... It's a funny song. Are we gonna flip? Okay, yeah, we'll flip. <laughs> We're not taking it seriously. Well, you got it, you got it. You got oh. Two hands clunker over there. I don't see any, like, I'm not smelling the crazy burnt oil. Again, this is pork fat, so that's a super, Higher. super, super high smoke. Higher! Ah! Here, do it. I'll guard against your face. Is this helping? No! <laughs> First, second, I was like, thank you, but then I was like, wait, I can't see! I'm gonna dunk this. I'm gonna dunk it when it's time. Dunk it. What? Dunk, yeah, but like, be safe. No. Nicole, throw me the alley-oop. You're gonna throw this in the air and I'm gonna windmill it. Okay. Just throw the ball in the air. Throw the ball in the air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. You're crazy, bro. <laughs> Sorry. I thought we were gonna get it right. I didn't think she'd flip it. We got it. Ha! They looked so silly. And we look like professionals. Let's pull it. Oh. Yeah. Pull it. Right. Pull in plate. Pull. pull in plate. All right, so we have the fried rice where we got the pork fat well past its smoke point. It pork fat smoke point about 375. We got this like 550 when we dropped it in. Uh, and this is with it dumped out in fresh oil. So in theory, in this one, you would taste the burn on that oil. It should taste a little bit acrid, a little bit bitter, but we don't know for sure. Let's dig in. What do you guys want to eat? I just want a diet coke. Let's try with dump fat, just because that's been our constant. So we know what we're... You guys ever think that like doing this cooking show kind of ruins food for us? Because like we eat in excess till we don't want to anymore? Don't get me started. I mean, it looks pretty identical, right? Yeah. Who's to say? That is a world of difference. What are you tasting? Less char flavor, mm -hmm. more char flavor. Yeah. And we had them at the same temperature. Well, we had them, we had this at an initial higher temperature. I'm wondering if like, I literally have no idea why that would be the case because we cooked it identically too. We did. Like we were pretty lockstep with each other. And you know what? Some things in food, are just indescribable, they're indelible, right? they're inextricable. You can't actually define what they are. It's the ghost in the machine, and that's called love. Mm. That was beautiful. Thank you. It was. That means ultimately dumping the oil first wins, which means that mint munch us! Let us know in the comments whether you want us to keep doing the bit about myth bunching and bunching us. What is it called, myth bunchers? Myth bunchers. <laughs> What we found out today in busting Uncle Roger's fried rice mist, we found out that the wok really is better than the saute pan. Saute pan, you can still get some solid results, but it is a much different product. And the wok does have a much better even heat distribution. Definitely buy a wok, it's fun. Then day old rice, uh, pretty significantly better than fresh rice. You all said the fresh rice was just clumpy and it was soft and it was wet. Again, an edible product, but like we're not going for edibility. We're going for greatness. Ding, that was me. <laughs> I said that. And then in the issue of fat, we had peanut oil versus pork fat versus olive oil, courtesy of Jamie Oliva. Turns out that was pretty bad. Um, but peanut oil versus pork fat was quite close, except for pork fat really does just have a big meaty punch. Peanut oil was Uncle Roger's pick, but he also said he did like pork fat. Still, we're calling that a loss for Uncle Roger on there. Sorry about it. Then finally, we have dumping out the cooking fat and starting with fresh oil or not dumping it and just putting your aromatics in scorching oil. We found out that for whatever mysterious reason, dumping out the cooking fat really does work. It gets that wok hay in there. The, the old oil scorches the aromatics really quick, causes you to dump more stuff in there creating more steam. So, Lily, how many did you get right? I said wok, day old, pork fat, and dump. Hi, Uncle Roger. I got 100% on my test. Wow, we're from TV. You think that makes you better than us? Yes. <laughs> it does, literally, actually, yes, it does. Trevor. Yo, what's up? I trust Uncle Roger implicitly. I'm going wok, day old rice, peanut oil, and dump the oil. Uncle Roger, please. Do do me do right by me. I got a 75% on my test. See, pretty average, good for you, man. Nicole? Hey, I said walk, day old, peanut, and dump it. Keys. Little keys. Here, 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 here. I got three out of four, also 75%. Wow, very good, and that makes the loser. Wait, someone asked me. John, John, what did you what get? get? What did you get? Walk, day old, peanut, don't dump. I lost, I got 50% <laughs> out 
I failed. I'm going to drop out of fried rice school just like I dropped out of UCLA. You, you still hit me up for donations. You're like, you drop it. What? I, I get no benefit. I paid you thousands of dollars. You hit me up for donations. No, you should donate to me. Myth punchers, thank you for bunching out these munchers with me. You know, we had we had the mutts, we bunched them, we binged them. And here we are, we ate a lot of good fried rice. My brain is fried. And most of all, thank you all so much for coming out. I think what we learned today is that love is, I mean, it's just MSG, if we're being honest. It's not love. It's a delicious chemical called monosodium glutamate that is perfectly safe to consume and was originally distilled out of the natural properties of seaweed in Japan in the early 20th century. Is that the app? I can't imagine we need to say any more, right? You, you feel satisfied? You feel, we all feel satisfied? I feel satisfied. Yeah, right. feel, that's, I was um, dancing back here. I think pretty good episode, you know, uh -huh. at the end of the day. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Um, comment below how else, what else you want me to say. What's better than a mythical beast? A hydrated mythical beast. Shop Mythical Bestiary and always hydrated Nalgenes at mythical.com.